Hi everyone, welcome sa channel natin. Ako nga pala si Janus ng Pinotaktan. Today, pag-uusapan natin sa wakas the Poco Dead Boot issue as well as the OnePlus Green Line issue and other issues ng mga phones na dapat yung malaman in 2023. So let's start again with the Poco Dead Boot issues. But first off, gusto ko lang ipalam sa inyo na yung video na to wala aga anong edit. This is more like a podcast style na tuloy-tuloy lang yung usapan natin. And pasensya na at natagalan yung pag-produce natin ng video na to dahil ang dami ko talagang kinailangan na alamin tungkol sa mga issues na to bago ko i-share o ibahagi sa inyo yung mga nalalaman ko. Dahil hindi po ako technician, so nililinaw ko po, hindi po ako marunong mag-fix ng mga phones nyo. And number two, yung mga issues na to hindi po ito in-address ng mga brand. So, mahirap maghanap ng mga resources tungkol dito and about sa possible fixes ng mga phones sa to. Let's start with the Poco Dead Boot issue. Ano nga ba yung mga phones na affected ng issue na to? Yung madalas kong makita na nire-reklamo yung Poco M3, Redmi 9T, Poco X3, and Poco X3 Pro. So, yun po yung apat na Poco phones na madalas nakikitaan ng mga issues, madalas kong makitaan ng mga reklamo sa Facebook or even sa YouTube. First off, ano nga ba yung dead boot? Well, this is more of a general term lang na ginamit ng mga tao na pag sinabing ayaw na mag-on yung phone nila, dead boot na because it doesn't boot up. So yun lang yung pinaka-basic na description nun. Now, iba pa yon sa boot loop. Yung boot loop naman, that means nagre-reboot lang pa ulit-ulit yung phone mo and hindi siya nagtutuloy don sa system ng phone mo. So bakit nga ba nangyayari yung mga to? Is this a software thing or a hardware issue? Well, base sa mga nakita ko at nabasa ko online, this is actually more of a hardware issue. And while some of this might be triggered by a software update, an OS update, the thing is, this is really just a hardware issue kung saan nagkakaroon ng problema yung CPU or yung chipset. So, ibig sabihin ba nito, mababa yung quality ng chipsets na ginamit ng Poco? Now, medyo nagdududa ako sa claim na yun kasi yung mga chipsets na to, they come directly from the manufacturer. So, wala pong kinalaman sa manufacturing process yung Poco na brand. However, meron silang kinalaman kung paano palamigin yung mga chipsets na to. And I think that is where all of the issue arise pagdating sa pagkasira ng chipsets ng Poco phones. So it seems like this is a thermal issue na hindi natin agad-agad napapansin. So maybe medyo low quality yung nalagay nila na cooling or thermals para dito sa mga Poco phones ito. Kasi mukhang napakalipis ng number one, yung thermal paste and number two, yung copper strip na nakakover sa chipset ng mga phones na nakita kong nire-repair. Hindi super effective yung cooling na nilagay nila sa mga Poco phones na to. So madalas yung makikita online to fix this issue, ang ginagawa ng mga technician is yung reballing na tinatawag nila. At kung magtatanong naman kayo ko ano yung reballing, again, I'm not a technician pero sa basic understanding ko, it just means na tinatry nila na ma-reconnect yung chipset mo dun sa motherboard kasi yung pins nun or yung balls nun medyo naging shorter na siya and madalas rin nagiging issue to sa mga quick fixes kung saan nire-reheat lang yung CPU and hindi talaga binabaklas pag nire-reheat lang daw kasi yung chipset and hindi talaga binaklas para i-reball that means medyo iikse yung connecting pins kaya hindi na nagpa-power on yung mga phones and then very specific naman and much more rampant sa mga Poco X3 Pro yung issue with the PMIC or the Power Management Integrated Chip so ibig sabihin sabihin po nito yung sa charging pin natin. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng issue doon. Hindi na nag-charge. So, hindi na nag on yung phone natin kasi wala ng power na dumadaloy papunta sa battery. So, isa rin yan sa madalas na nasisira sa Poco X3 Pro. And I think we're seeing a pattern here na talagang may problema sa paggawa ng hardware ng mga Poco phones. For now, my advice is if merong mga phones with the models that I mentioned na binibenta sa inyo for second hand or maybe even brand new, I would think twice or thrice bago ko kunin yung phones na yan. Now, hindi ko naman sinasabi na guaranteed na mangyayari or masisira talaga yung phone nyo 
Dahil marami pa rin namang users na walang issues. So may mga Poco M3 users, may mga Poco X3, X3 Pro na okay na okay pa rin yung phones nila. Meron lang talagang specific bunch na minalas. So para sa peace of mind nyo and para hindi kayo magkaroon ng sleepless nights worrying about your phone getting bricked or getting a dead boot, well, I would advise na to look for some other model pagdating sa Poco phones. Now, I'm not saying na all Poco phones will have this issue. So, let's address this. Kasi maraming nagko-comment sa mga phone reviews ko na ginawa for Poco, especially for the Poco F4, X4 GT, X3 GT na sinasabi nila na, ay, dead boot yan. Poco dead boot, Xiaomi dead boot. Mahirap nga namang itanggi yun. Dahil, kita nyo naman, bilanggit ko na mismo dito sa video na merong mga phone model na affected nun. And mind you, hindi lang po limited to sa mga Poco phones kasi pati yung Xiaomi 10T and 10T Pro, nako, tinamaan rin po sila ng dead boot issue and mukhang CPU rin yung problem. Pati yung flagship level ng Xiaomi, my hardware issue rin. And that is the Xiaomi Mi 11. Mamaya, sasabihin ko yan. But first, what's the solution para sa dead boot issue kung meron na yung phone nyo? Dalhin nyo sa technician kasi most of these phones came out two or three years ago. So, medyo out of the warranty coverage na sila. So, kailangan yun talagang dalhin sa technician and magbabayad ko. Now, as for how much the fee or the cost is for the repair, that is something that you need to talk with the technician kasi hindi ko po alam yung rates nila. Pero sa mga napanood ko, yung mga issues na to, e eh, kayang-kaya naman maayos ng mga local technicians natin. It's just that you have to wait for the parts na makuha nila kasi hindi po readily available yung mga replacement parts kung sakali mang kailangan ng replacement parts yung phone nyo. Na isa pang bagay na dapat nyo gawin is to join Facebook groups na mga phone models na meron kayo na may dead boot. So tingnan nyo po doon kung paano na paayos nung iba yung issues nila and that's where you should start para matry nyo na mapaayos or ma-fix yung issue ng phone nyo. So with that said, it is understandable na lahat ng mga naapektuhan ng dead boot ay eh, talagang iiwasan na nila yung brand na Poco kasi ayun na nga may trauma na nangyari na sa kanila yung masamang pangyayari and ayaw na nilang maulit ayaw nila na magkaroon ng chance na maulit yon and again I understand that pero gusto ko lang linawin sa inyo na hindi porket nangyari na yon sa Poco before eh mangyayari na talaga rin sa mga future releases ng phones nila we still have to look at the phones objectively individually para lang makita natin kung okay nga ba tong phone na to or if this is something that would potentially have a problem. We have to wait for full reviews, long-term reviews to find out yung mga issues na to. And that is something that we can't do as a tech YouTuber na agad-agad na malalaman natin na magkakaroon ba ito ng dead boot. Tulad na lang rin with the Samsung phones before with the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 na sumasabog. We can't tell if sasabog ba ulit yung mga Samsung phones. So it's really just up to you guys kung meron pa rin kayong tiwala sa mga brands na mababanggit ko dito na may mga problematic phones. Kasi hindi lang po po kung pag-uusapan natin. Next up, nandyan yung OnePlus and the Samsung phones. Unahin natin sa OnePlus. So yung OnePlus 70 and 8T phones ay merong green line issue sa mga phones nila. So yung specific issue na to is with the green vertical line na makikita sa mga phones right after updating to a particular Android OS. Correct me in the comment section kung ano nga ba talaga yung tamang Android OS but I think it was Android OS 12. And so this one is super random lang rin. Hindi po nabagsak yung phone, hindi po nag-overheat. Talagang out of the blue, pag on nila ng screen nila, pag tingin nila, may green line na. And that's alarming as well. Kasi marami po ang apektado nito. And the thing is, yung mga phones ito are already out of warranty coverage. So wala na pong claim to get a free replacement para sa mga displays na to. And it hurts so much kasi yung mga phones na to, hindi po ito mumurahin. And also, yung replacement ng display, it will cost you about 10000 or upwards sa pagpalit ng display. This is not just something that happened to OnePlus because a similar thing happened to Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus users. So pag-update nila ng software, boom! vertical green lines sa display nila and it's just not one vertical green line several vertical green lines so good luck with that nakakainis and nakakaasar kasi this all happened when the warranty already ran out. So, sobrang saklap nito kasi kahit sa Samsung, ang sinasabi nila hindi na covered by warranty, that means you have to pay for the replacement display. 
which will cost, again, around 10,000 to 15,000 pesos. Napakamahal po nun, mas okay pa na bumili ng bagong phone instead of spending that much for a display replacement. So para sa mga affected ng issue na to, would you say na you will never buy another Samsung phone or you will never buy another OnePlus phone? I bet a lot of you will still say na you still trust the brand and hindi nyo i-generalize na lahat ng phone models nila ay magkakaroon ng green line issue. But the thing is, sa Samsung, nakita ko na since Samsung Galaxy S7, S8, S9, Merong green line issues. So this issue is not just limited to the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. This has been happening to previous Samsung Galaxy S models. Yet people are still buying and trusting Samsung and they're not really saying na ay green line issue, green line issue and all that. And sa tingin ko, ang common denominator sa issue ng green line, vertical green lines with the OnePlus and the Samsung phones is that they're both using Samsung panels which seem to be problematic. So let's all cross our fingers na iba na yung mga Samsung panels na ginamit nila for the phones starting with the OnePlus Ace and the Samsung S22 series, S23 dahil masaklap po yun kung magkakaroon ng green line issue yung mga phones na yun dahil napakarami po ang bumili lalo na sa OnePlus Ace, OnePlus Ace Pro. So with that said, tatanungin ko kayo yung mga users ng Samsung as well as ng OnePlus Kung uulit pa ba ulit kayo sa brand na to, considering na merong ganitong klaseng issue. And how about for the Poco users na affected by dead boot? Would you still put your trust sa brand ng Poco? So that's something to think about and I would love to see what your comments are and what your thoughts are about still trusting the brand that somehow betrayed your trust. So nakakadismaya but I understand na mas mahal yung binayad ng mga Samsung and OnePlus users sa mga phones nila versus someone who bought a Poco M3, Poco X3 Pro or a Poco X3 NFC. So yeah, medyo magkaiba ng levels. And speaking of levels, binanggit ko kanina na may hardware issue rin po yung flagship level na Xiaomi phone and that is with the Xiaomi Mi 11. So with this one, yung global version nito, sobrang rampant ng issue with the Wi-Fi dying as well as the motherboard failing. So once your Wi-Fi dies, most likely susunod na rin po daw masisira yung motherboard mo and it's up for replacement. And sobrang rame na mga Xiaomi Mi 11 phone users or buyers na pinalitan yung unit nila or ni-refund sila dahil nga nasira yung phone nila. And again, that is mostly with the global phone version of the Xiaomi Mi 11. My Xiaomi Mi 11 na China ROM has been spared so far. So hindi pa naman nasisira tong phone na to. Hopefully hindi rin masira talaga dahil sayang yung pera. But it just goes to show guys na whether you're getting a flagship phone or just an entry level phone, eh pwedeng pwedeng parehong maapektuhan yan ng hardware issue. Wala pong pwedeng mas spare from production issues. Now, at the end of the day, guys, I'm sure hindi lang po limited sa mga phones na binanggit ko dito sa video, yung mga issues. And I'm sure meron pang mga phone brands, phone models na affected with other issues as well. And kung meron kayong first-hand experience or kung yung sarili yung phone mismo ngayon ay may issue, let me know in the comment section kung ano yung phone model na gamit nyo and kung ano yung specific issue and kung meron na bang solution or napaayos nyo na ba. I wanna read all of your comments, magtulungan tayo, i-share natin sa mga tao kung ano yung mga known issues ng mga phones na gamit natin. Anyway, I hope nakatulong tong video na to, nabuksan or namulat yung isipan nyo tungkol sa mga phone models na binanggit ko. And kung gusto pang manood mga videos ko, may mga i-link po ako dyan. I'm sure magugustuhan nyo lahat yan. Hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo.